I f out is going to. Have you ever slapped the shit out of somebody in the street? Cause like, bro, if I walked around with your skills, I'm fucking dudes up. No, um, you know, been some unfortunate situations, yeah. If for some reason Jake Paul ever called you out on a fight, would you entertain the idea? It's really not even your business what somebody thinks about you. It's your business what you think about you. Yeah, that's true. You know what? It's like, I mean, that's why? It. That one stuck with me. Obviously, I got two losses on my record, but you know, I feel if we run it back. Are you trying to plan on running it back? I would like to, yeah, yeah, with David and Canelo. That that's my goal. All right, we're ready to rock. Yeah, we're set. Divige. Are you coming in or coming out? Because I because I have a fighter here. I'll fuck you up. Well, not me. I'll have him fuck you up. Nah, uh, nah, not me. I'm chilling. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome like, I'm back, off. guys. Uh, <laughs> you guys are watching the George Janko Show with my beautiful girlfriend, Shauna Della Rica. Hi, guys. And I have an amazing guest today, Caleb Plant. And I got to say, man, I'm excited to get into this conversation. And uh, you probably think we're going to get into boxing. But when I was uh, doing my homework on, like, just who you are as a human being, dude, there's a lot of times where I was like, man, I gotta pick this dude's brain. So today might not just be like an interview, it might be just learning a lot from your mindset. For sure, sounds good. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for coming. Um, Reed, yeah, can, we, can we take me. off the noise gate on his mic yeah. real quick? So, how's your day going so far? Man, going good. Just um, been busy running a few errands, training this morning, um, getting some like, you know, I have a clothing, Clothing line called Revenge Tour, just getting some designs together, trying to get like some artwork together for that. I seen that. Oh, cool. And uh, can, I, can I ask you what inspired you to go for the revenge uh, theme? I mean, uh, I think like you know everybody, we've all come up short in something that we wanted, you know, to get or accomplish, and you know, on the way to that, you you fall short and you you hit stumbling blocks and roadblocks, and um, you know, along the way, people tell you you can't, you you know you run into setbacks and stuff like that. And you know, for all those things that happen to you in your life, you gotta get your revenge, you gotta get your get back. And that's what the revenge tour is about. It's really just about the get back. And you know, when you think of revenge, it may have like, you know, a negative theme to it. But if, you know, getting revenge for your goals, you know, allows you to be disciplined, be focused, you know, do the right things when you wake up throughout the day and when you go to sleep to, you know, get you a step closer, then, you know, why not? Do you think, um, do you think boxing helped you more than just a sport? Do you think it's like changed the way you look at certain type of obstacles when it comes to your life? Um, I mean, yeah, I definitely say so. I've been doing it organized competitively since I was nine. So, you know, boxing's really all I know, but along the way, you know, your goals, they uh, develop you into, you know, a different person. The setbacks along the way, the trials, the tribulations, people saying you can't, you know, you working hard towards something and accomplishing a goal and it, you know, encouraging you and motivating you to want to work even harder to get, see, just see how far you can take it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, not just boxing, but, you know, anything you set your mind to is going to allow you to be, you know, the best version of yourself. Yeah. I want to, um, I want to like basically lay out a timeline because before I jump in and start asking questions on the obstacles you had to go through and how you went through them, I also want the audience and me and Bell to, to see more of your point of view on your your upbringing. Um, what was the first time that you were like putting on gloves and what was the reason for it? Um, well, the first time I went into a gym, that was uh, at nine years old. And, you know, my dad and my grandfather scrounged together a little bit of money to, you know, be able to open up a gym where I met and it was a real small space. Um, it didn't have any mats on the floor. It was just a white tile floor. And uh, when people trained, it would get sweaty. People would slip and fall. And um, there wasn't enough room for a ring. And we didn't have enough money for a ring. So uh, when people would spar, we'll stand around in a square and hold hands. <laughs> that way people won't just be people you know, running into by, the walls. They're like, that's and, a ritual, man. Yeah, that's yeah, not yeah, a yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a sacrifice. <laughs> yeah, it's a sacrifice. And um, well. there was just like one heavy bag in the corner. You couldn't even work all the way around it. But you know, I think that just goes towards you know, you're not needing the fanciest things. You know, when you start something and you got something that you really like, you know, you don't need all the latest equipment and stuff. As long as you're passionate about it and you're, you know, focused and you're working hard, mm. you know, you don't need all the best equipment. And um, but, yeah, that's where I started. And my dad just wanted to open that up so that I wouldn't just run around be, and, you know, get in trouble when I got older. Just run around my buddies getting in trouble um, up to no good and stuff. And it clearly works. So. You know, yeah. Devin Haney said the same thing. Mm. And it, it's <clears throat> astonishing how a father figure could turn a whole life around yeah. just by pushing his son in the right direction. Absolutely. So yeah. if, if you had to talk to somebody who was in your shoes when coming up was very, very hard for them, 
and they want to do something in your status of boxing, but they see these behind the scenes of boxers doing the best, like even sitting in like uh, the cold plunges are like yeah. $5,000 to get a cold plunge and to get a, a, a meal person, to get a trainer. Yeah. How in your mind did you go, I'm going to not only do this, I'm going to be the best of the best and I'm going to do it with a bare minimum of nothing. Did your mind switch when the money started coming? Did your training change? Or did, were you like, hey, if it's not broken, don't fix it? Yeah, I mean, you know, a lot of people will tell you that boxing is like a poor man's sport. So starting off, the families, the kids, you know, they don't have a lot. But you don't need a cold plunge to take an ice bath. You know, on the way home from the gym, you know, if you stop and you buy three bags of ice from the gas station and, you know, put the water on cold and pour it in there, you buy six bags of ice or whatever it may be, you know, that's just as good as a cold plunge. And um, so, like I said, you don't need the, the fanciest stuff to get it done. And when you really want something, you're going to figure out how to get it done with the resources you have. You know, mm -hmm. if you don't if you don't really want it and, that, that, you know, there's a few roadblocks in your way, you're like, oh, I can't do it. But when you want something bad enough, you know, you're going to figure out how to get it done. You're going to figure out how to take an ice bath. You're going to figure out, you know, how to eat the healthiest meal that you can afford, you know, during training camp and out of training camp to try and be at your very best. Um, you know, again, you don't need all that fancy stuff. If, if you want it bad enough, you're going to figure out a way to get it done. 100%. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take off a layer and be a little bit more vulnerable with you. I uh, recently started climbing a mountain that I know I could achieve. And everybody around me started explaining and showing me that this is actually happening. And I'm actually focused. And once I got the obstacles out of the way, and now it's me and that mountain... I started having panic attacks. Mm. And when I was doing my homework on you, you went through, in my heart, one of the hardest things to ever deal with. How do you put yourself in a position to put your pants on, get to work, when, from your point of view, life just keeps throwing you some absolute bullshit? Yeah. How do you, in an interview, say, I will always go left? And I love that you always go left. But what puts you in the right state of mind to ignore what's in front of you to keep focusing? Mm, it's probably uh, just not have, having anything to fall back on, you know, like. And, and your specific question was just, you know, when they, when life throws curveballs, how do you keep making the decision to keep going? Yeah, because like if, if you're already so, like, for example, you being a boxer at your status is what say I, I took a kid from Scottsdale, Arizona, yeah. and he has a perfect background that alone is still hard to get to your to your status of where you're at in boxing yeah. how it's do harder. you manage it's harder because that kid has something to fall back on you know he's got so a, you're saying you he's got a to home have. to go to you know he's got you know a organized family he's got you know parents who will put him through college he has you know other resources you know he has things to fall back on but it's like when you have your mind made up or you're in a situation where you don't have any other options you're going to get it done, you mm. know, and sometimes you may procrastinate on things and, and, you know, try to talk yourself out of it. Or you may have thoughts that come about that are trying to talk you out of it. But it's if you want to get it done bad enough, you know, you're going to make time for it. You know, there's tons of people who make time for video games, you know, myself included, obviously. But are you a Fortnite <laughs> player, too? No, no, no. I like Call of Duty. <laughs> but it's like I want to do that. So I make time for it when I want to. Time is made to get that done. Well, if you want something else just as bad as that, you know, you're going to be sure to put that time to the side to make sure that it gets done before you go on with the rest of your day and things get lost in your day. You're going to make sure you get that done. And, you know, it being easier for me, me loving boxing so much, I can just remember so many times as a kid just not even being able to go to sleep at night because I just want to train. I want to go run. I'm studying boxing. You know, I just love it so much. I can't even – I'm just staring at the back of my eyelids at night because I just can't wait to – you know, I need to go run or I, or I wanna I wanna go run or I got I wanna go to training. You know, you can't keep me out of the gym. And you know, if you're not chasing something that you really love like that, then you gotta at least chase something you like and so you cultivate that into something that you do love. You know, you may not start off loving something, you may just start off liking it, but over time you get so good at it and you know, you cultivate that, it does become something you love, something you can't put down. And I feel like it was just kinda like the perfect storm of me not, you know, having anything to fall back on you know, not wanting to be at home. You know, I felt like I was a kid nobody wanted to be, but, you know, I go to the gym from the time, three o'clock to 10 o'clock at night, five days a week, six days a week. 
you know, I'm surpassing all my peers very quickly because of the amount of time I'm spending in the gym. And then people start looking up to me. People want to start being like me. People start calling my name out. But then I go home, I got to go back to something I don't really like being around, be, go back to being someone no one wants to be. Then the next day I get this little dose of this drug where I get to be somebody, I get to feel good about myself. And then, you know, you just keep running up for so many years doing that, you know, 20 years later, you're going to be going to be pretty good at what you do you know I absolutely love that yeah it's kind of I mean it's almost like you know they say like the worst thing you can do is get comfortable yeah. and you didn't you didn't have the comfortability to to stop yeah yeah and it didn't matter if I did because what I'm not doing this I'm doing this so one day I can be comfortable I can make money I can provide for my family but really that's not my true reason why you know I just love boxing I love training I love working out and pushing myself and I've become so good at it just trying to see how far I can take it you know before my time expires it just it keeps me going. Yeah. But it's, it's, I want to move past this, but I just feel like there's just something about the way that you handle it is different, man. Um, I would love to bring up the situation that you had with your mother. Mm -hmm. I saw an interview with a, a girl and she was just drilling you with these questions. And in my mind, I'm like, dude, this, the way she's even going about it, it was just super disrespectful. And the way that you were talking seemed like you had the best PR team in the world. The way you talked about police officers, the way you talked about the situation that it was at hand. Uh. It, are you taking out all your rage in the ring that when you're like now in your real life, you're able to deal with any storm that comes your way? Like, how, there, is, there a, is it a therapist? Is it um, a <laughs> spirituality? Is it uh. a certain friend that helps you focus? Like, uh. what is it that brought you to a level that I genuinely have never seen in a human being? Yeah, I mean, um, I don't really know the situation you're talking about, about the interviewer, you know, asking me those questions as a lady. But um, just trying to keep in mind that, you know, I'm sure I just was trying to keep in mind that she's not trying to be disrespectful or, you know, you got to keep in mind someone's intent. You know, some people are trying to be disrespectful and some people are trying to just do the job the best they can. Maybe she wasn't that good at her job. But I definitely feel like... Um, you know, certain situations, they've given me a lot of experience. And, you know, experience is what you get right after you need it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and absolutely. So just gaining that experience through life and through those situations, you know, giving me a different perspective and, you know, a bird's eye view, I think is important. And, um, you know, I've had strong men in my life, my dad, my grandfather, and, you know, teaching me to be mindful, teaching me to think about what I'm doing and what I'm saying before I say it. And, then, you know, when you hear me speak, I'm just trying to be, just being honest, being real, you know, and um, so if you hear me speaking and it sounds good, I'm just trying, I'm not trying to, you I'm not trying too hard, I'm just speaking from the heart. And you can and, feel um, it. You can tell when something's authentic or something's bullshit. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And then with my boxing, you know, just all the things I've been through, want to take that out on somebody else, you know, all the times I was let down, all the times, you know, I was hurt or I was embarrassed or, you know, they left, you know, people treated me bad or said I couldn't do it, you know, just being able to wrap that all into some ball and taking out on someone else and, you know, in, in a certain way, wanting them to feel how I've been embarrassed and let down and hurt and trying to put that on them. So your main focus is when, like, you have nothing to back on, right? So the kid from Scottsdale is going to have a little harder. Right now you got to a level where the money's beautiful, the, yeah. the situation's beautiful. What keeps that same type of, uh, like, fire when you're in the ring? I mean, just not doing it for the money, you know. Again, okay, that's cool. what I was telling you is, like, that's not my number one reason why. And that's why you just and go so, after these fights, the certain fights. You're, di you're different when it comes to boxing because a lot of people like to put a lot of rosters on. They go for the guys yeah, they can yeah. run through. Yeah. And you're not doing that. Yeah, it, um, just, you know, I, I mean it when I say I, I want to be a legendary fighter. I want my name in the big book. You know, I want it in a way that can't be erased. And so, you know, I don't want to get to the end of my career and retire. And all I said is, you know, I said I was the best. I said I was as good. You know, I think it'd be better if I proved it, not just Shall to it, everyone yeah. else, but to myself as well. You know, why I go through life wondering if I could have done this or should have done that, especially when it's with something you love and work hard at already, you might as well let it ring out and see how far you can really take it. And you can't do that unless you, you know, your opposition is the best people out there. I love that. Was right. there ever a situation where you're like sparring somebody or like in a, in a ring with somebody and they just hit you and you're like, what the fuck was that, bro? Like, that was like not, I wasn't expecting that and I don't like that. Yeah, yeah, I mean, obviously, you know, like I said, I've been doing this for so long and sparred so, so 
frequently thousands and thousands of rounds, you know, and also sparred really good fighters as well too. But coming up, you know, at some point you're gonna get hit with a good shot in sparring. And, um, you know, if it was on video, it may not look good for the, the social media era, era, but you know, that's experience as well. It may not be something you want or you like or felt good, but how did you respond to that? You know, if you got hurt with a body shot, did you keep fighting through it? Did you, now you know what it feels like. So if it happens in a fight, you know, you've been there before, you know how to handle it a little bit better, so. I love that. Yeah. What do you got going on now? Now that you're like kind of, you're doing the boxing thing, but you, like you say, you like playing Call of Duty. Is there <laughs> anything else that like brings you joy that you like to just mess around with? Uh, yeah, I, you know, the clothing line, the revenge tour revenge, stuff, yep. you know, that's something that I really like, you know, something I see myself doing after boxing. And um, so just really focused on that. And I don't want to, you know, speak on it too much or, or be too specific, but, you know, I'm in the, the midst of trying to open up something that will be, you know, up and running while I'm still boxing, but also, you know, something that I'll transition towards even after boxing and pushing it, you know, pushing it forward too. And, um, you know, I don't want to speak too much on it, but it's going to be good. It's going to be nice. Passion awesome. project? Huh? Passion project? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Just for my the second half of my life, you know, I feel like a lot of fighters, you know, they climb this mountain their whole life. And then when they retire, it's the what you know, it, there's, another, there's another mountain to be climbed. And it's mm -hmm. like you're so tired from climbing the first one. And you just, you know, it's like you say, fuck it, I'm done. You know, I, I you know when you've already pr more than likely spent up a lot of your money on things that you don't need anyway throughout your career. So I want to be able to tr transition smoothly from, you know, active to retired in a space that, you know, with things that I really like to do, you know, I don't want to, and this ain't no knock on any job, but there's certain jobs that I just, I couldn't do, you know, I couldn't stand in line and do all day. So I got to create something that, you know, I'll be excited about to wake up and go do. Yeah. I love that you're setting your foundation for your next mountain already. A lot of people don't like to do that. Yeah. They kind of get scared. Like, it, it sounds like a plan B, but you're like, nah, I'm going to finish this job, and I'm going to get to that job. Yeah, yeah. And also, you know, I got a great team around me where I don't have to spend all day, you know, doing particular tasks where it may take away from my training and put me in a situation where, you know, I'm not at my best for a fight. You know, I'm in a situation where I got such a good team around me that, you know, I can put certain people in place to, you know, get certain information while I'm in my spare time doing my, my own homework. And then, you know, when you put that together, you have, you know, a team that can continuously, you know, create and build things. And um, I'm just trying to get that in order for, you know, the second half of my life. Awesome, dude. Yeah. yeah. Um, I want to ask you, because you said you started boxing when you were nine, right? Yeah. So is there like, do you have a specific memory of you? You know, you, you're starting, you're seeing if you like it. It's kind of just like fun, right? At first, yeah. is there like a specific moment where you're like, oh, this is it. This is what I want to go after. Is this somebody that inspired you? Or? Um, yeah, I mean, pretty early on, I was like hooked right away just based off, you know, being able to go somewhere and do something I liked or stay at home. And, you know, I'm from Tennessee, way on the country, so it's like it's not like there's a lot to do. Oh, yeah. Um, so I was hooked immediately. But when I first started as an amateur, I was like one in four, one wins, four losses. And then all of a sudden I went on like a big win streak and things, you know, really started to click for me. I started beating fighters who were, you know, way above my experience level and stuff like that. And that's when, you know, that's when things really started to roll. And even my dad noticed, like, oh, okay, yeah, we got something here. So That's crazy yeah. that you just fell into that. Yeah. Was anybody in your um, family a fighter? Yeah, my dad was. Oh, so he was a boxer? Oh. Yeah, he was He was a fighter oh, awesome. back in the day. So it was, you know, natural for him to want to open that door for me. And, oh, of course. You know, pass that along. Yeah. And, you want so. any of your kids to, if you have, like, a son, do you want them to follow in that footsteps? Um, You know, I'm going to support my kids, you know, with whatever they want, um, whether it's something I had in mind for them or not. You know, preferably, preferably not. Cause it's just it's so hit or miss yeah. but um if that's what they want to do you know i'm never going to deter my children from you know supporting them on whatever journey they want to you know i'm always be there to back them so i love that yeah and speaking of children you just had uh, a baby girl right yeah yeah charlie she she's um eight months almost nine months well, congratulations. congratulations thank you man. thank you how's yeah. that going it's going good um she actually so not this last fight, but the fight before that, she came with like four weeks till the fight, like halfway through camp, she was born. And, um, you know, trying to spend time with her, but at the same time trying to like stay focused. And, mm. you know, I have a job to do. I'm the provider of, of course, my family. Of and um, so it was cool to, for her to come at that uh, particular time. It was just, it was an interesting time. And, um, you know, but my wife, Jordan, she held it down through camp. And, uh, you know, she's such a great, a great teammate, a great mom. and. 
um, you know, I'm blessed to have her in my life and uh, we make a great team. And, you know, I'm super excited for my daughter to be here and just healthy and strong. And Amen. it's great. Yeah. How'd you guys meet? Um, well, she works in boxing and uh, she's actually a, a, like a sideline reporter for yeah. Fox. And she does all the pay-per-view fights and a lot of the Fox shows and and stuff like that. And so uh, but before she was even into that, she was uh, working in boxing and was at a fight and uh, seen me. And um, <laughs> she was stalking me. No, no, I'm <laughs> no, no. But um, I seen her fight and, you know, we, we just spoke briefly and, you know, then we just stayed in contact uh, after that. And, you know, ever since then, we just been together. Um, Rockin', she's a, she, like I said, she's a great teammate, great mom, great wife, you know, really puts me in a position where I can really focus on my craft and just go hard at what I want to do. And, you know, she's got enough trust and belief in me to, you know, allow me to do that and know that I'm going to come through. So, and she's a hard worker, you know, herself, um, you know, obviously handling things with Charlie. Um, and then, you know, with our financial team, we got a lot going on as far as like rental properties and, and stocks and DB and pension and, you know, all, all sorts of, you know, stuff for after boxing to put us in a good position. She handles a lot of that. So. Was she the one that motivated you to get into that stuff or were you kind of already in it? No, I was already, you know, I wasn't into that because we we met, uh, you know, pretty pretty early on my career. I only had like 10, 12 fights. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. So there was a time where she was, you know, I would put my fight check towards bills and we would split them. And then it got to a point where it's like my fight check would run out and she would hold the bills down until my next fight came along. Wow. And then, you know, we would be back up in a certain position. And so uh, she was with me from like the get go. That that must be the best feeling. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. That must know. be the best feeling. She's your backbone. Yeah, exactly. I, exactly. No doubt. Having um, a backbone is a perfect example. Having a backbone. Um, I try to explain to people like when you're with somebody they could either push you up yeah. or they push you down no one keeps you in the in the middle of it yeah. and uh i love when i see somebody that has a partner like you do because i just know that like at the end of the day you have somebody to like be with and yeah, it's just such a beautiful me. beautiful thing yeah definitely especially as an athlete you know um to be able to have a woman like that in my life you know sometimes that can be a rare thing someone who's not just trying to sit to the side and take photos or, or, you know, be on Instagram all day, but someone who's putting in just as work much, if not more work than me on, you know, our goals and things we got set for the future. And, you know, like you said, it's important to have someone like that because, you know, you are who you hang around. And if you're around your partner the most out of everyone else, you know, those, those things could rub off on you. So she's, she's definitely a good influence, but yeah, we both, we both uh, wanted that for our future. And so it was easy for us to want to, you know, conspire together and, and put a plan and a plot together on how to, you know, make this thing last. Yeah. Um, oh, I, did you want to say something? Sorry. No, I just said, oh, okay. I thought you said like, so I was like, no, because I was like, looking this way, and I said, um, and I was like, oh, I don't want to cut her off. Uh, oh, man, I just forgot what I was saying. Oh, you <laughs> when so you guys sorry. first started dating, did she ever like, interview, like have to interview, and you guys were low key dating, maybe not telling anybody yet, and then you're doing an interview? Oh, uh, cool. we, we was like, um, she was working certain fights, yeah, and we was dating, and just kind of keeping it to ourselves, you know, until we got to a certain point where we knew, like, this is super serious. You know, we see ourselves being together. And then, you know, we wanted to go about it the right way. Yeah. And, uh, you know, be respectful of everyone else as well. So, um, but, you know, they seen that it's that it's a real thing, obviously. And, you know, they're all on board for it. That's good. I remember what I was saying, sorry. And by the way, that was super unprofessional of me. Thank you for not punching me. Oh, yeah, no problem. <laughs> That's your uh, last one. Though. Yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> That's why we put a little distance between yeah. me and you. Uh, so I saw your social media page, and when I was running down, the aesthetics is, like, super, like, cool. Like, I, I really like the way everything kind of fits together. Um, are you the one behind that, or do you have a team for that? And then are you into social media, or are you kind of, like, anti-social media? Uh, um, I have a team, like, you know, I have photographers and, you know, a videographer guy, and, um, but for the most, you know, I'm the one who runs my social media and posts and stuff like that. And, you know, if that's how people are going to be introduced to me or keep up with me, you know, I, wouldn't, I want it to be authentic and them getting the real Caleb. So, uh, but as far as like the aesthetics, you know, I really just post, I don't, I'm not really like consciously trying to make it look a certain way or, you know, a certain theme, you know, I just post what I like and, um, and yeah, I'm for social media. I'm not like, you know, social media guru or on it all day or, you know, nothing like that. But as far as, you know, marketing and branding, you know, it's a smart way to get your, your brand out there. Super and, build smart. It. Yeah. and it's yeah. funny, dude. Like when you slap, uh, 
Canelo and that you had like a swipe where you like like yeah. to me that's just, it's carrying on the sales of it. And yeah. do you like having to be a like kind of like in dog mode and talk shit and like get into the people's heads? Do you like is it like something you're interested in or you know it just sells a ticket so you're like oh I'll go with this shit. Uh, well I'm never trying to like sell a fight. You know I don't want to be someone that I'm not. You know regardless. You know, at any point in my life, in any place in my life, you know, I'd rather just, that takes too much energy for somebody like me. You know, I'm just going to be me. People are going to like it or they won't. And, you know, I'm not doing what I do for people who don't like it. So, but um, I do enjoy, you know, I'm a competitive person. So if we're doing something, you know, especially like boxing, I'm going to have my game face on. And, um, you know, I don't, I believe I can't be beat. Obviously, I got two losses on my record, but, you know, I feel if we run it back. Are you trying to plan on running it back? I would like to, yeah, yeah, with David and Canelo, that that's my goal. But um, who do you have your eyes on right now? Like, who are you training for? Um, well, right now, you know, I don't have a fight lined up, but uh, hopefully by the end of the year, November, December is the plan. Oh, so and, you uh, will you train, and then you have no idea who you're going up against yet, and then you'll find somebody, and then you'll then you'll train for that. Person. Yeah, I have, you know, well, I have a manager and an advisor, and uh, you know, they help me put that together, and. Uh, so we have a plan in place, but not someone specific. You know, we just know the roundabout time period where we're we're trying to land on. Yeah. How, how are you feeling about all this uh, social media influencing boxing? Does it piss you off? You're like, oh, that's kind of cool. <laughs> uh, I mean, it's just a thing, really. It doesn't really, like, move me one way or another. If that's what they want to do, you know, that's on them. I'm focused on my career, you know, on my goals. I got a lot of future plans, and so I don't have much time to, like... If, if, yeah. if for some reason... Jake Paul ever called you out on a fight? Would you entertain the idea? You'd be like, nah, bro, I'm not, I'm not doing this. Uh, you know, I don't think I don't think he would do that. You know, I've talked to Jake a couple of times. You know, he's a fan of me. And, you know, I'm not a hater on Jake. You know, he obviously made a lot of money long before he came into boxing. And if he wanted to set that aside and, you know, take the training seriously and, you know, get up there in front of all them people and, you know, throw down with someone else when he doesn't have to. Um, you know, you got to tip your hat to a guy like that. You know, he doesn't have to do that. He obviously wants to. And now coming up with a loss, you know, now we'll really be able to see how bad he wants to he be wants a boxer it. if he yeah. wants to keep going. And thus far, you know, it seems like he does. So, you know, that's good for – seems like Jake's taking it the most serious out of all of them for 100%. sure. 100%. So. But even before, like, this is a thing. Like, he just loved fighting. Like, it, it was just in his blood to fight. Like, he mm -hmm. loves – to get into people's faces. Like, there was one time we were at LA Fitness and some dude was talking shit to me, bro. And I'll just let it go. And all of a sudden, I turn around, he's in the dude's face. And the dude had five dudes with him. It wasn't like he was by himself. I feel like he just has the heart to fight. Like, yeah, he, yeah. he just wants and it. And you know, maybe he just looks at you like a friend and had your back, whether he was going to get beat up by five guys or not. You know, sometimes that's not what's important. It's just about that's, having somebody you know having respect. their back. You I was know, like, Jake, so. I'll see you in the parking lot. Let me know how this all happened. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, uh, we were just talking about it last night. You can take some hits. Bro, dude. <laughs> they, okay, so like, we, I'm watching all of your highlights clip by clip, and I'm just reviewing it. I'm reviewing it. And Bell's laughing because I'm pausing. I'm like, dude, you don't get this, bro. Like, <laughs> any of those punches would land me in a hospital immediately. And this is what I love. When you get hit, dude, and like professional boxers, people in your like status, they'll get hit. And this is what makes me laugh. You get hit in the face, and in me, I'm like, you should be in a coma. And this is all you guys do. You go, <clears throat> and then just go back into it. I'm like, that's just unreal. You can't, you can't get trained for getting a jaw like that. Did you notice that you were taking punches and blows that like other people were not taking? Oh, uh, well, I mean, for the most part, you know, the best chance is the one that doesn't get hit. You know, yeah, I'm. I'm from the school of boxing where, you know, it's not cool to get hit. It's not cool to trade punches or, or get beat up. And um, so, you know, I'm not sure what the status quo is after this last fight. But before that, you know, I had the best defense out of everyone in the super middleweight division, you know, from coffee box. And so, you know, that's what I pride myself on is, you know, not getting hit with a lot of shots. Obviously, with this last fight, sometimes a fight breaks out and you, you got to scrap. You know, you got to throw down and you got to do what you got to do. And um, I do have a good chin, if, you know as a last resort if that's something that I need. But, you know, like I said, it's not about how hard of a shot you can take. It's about not taking shots. And so that's why yeah. hopefully, you know, I don't want to get this interview confused or confuse any other boxers out there or fans. You know, it's not cool to take punishment. It's not cool to take hits. But sometimes, you know, you got to let it all hang out and put it on the line. And if that's what it takes, you know, that's what you got to do. Yeah. I love that. Who do you, who do you like watch? Uh, who do you like watching? 
um, reti- like past fighters or from this era? Anybody, anybody. Who's your, like your favorite person to review and like pick up on? Oh yeah, I mean, I have like a long list of guys. I study a lot of film, and so uh, James Tony, uh, Floyd Mayweather, Andre Ward, Terry Norris, um, Mike McCallum, uh, Sugar Ray Leonard, uh, Tommy Hearn. I mean, the list goes on and on. Salvador Sanchez. Did you ever train with the Mayweather team? Uh, I've never been a part of the Mayweather team, but, you know, I've trained in that gym quite a bit, and, you know, I know Floyd. I know a lot of the guys in there. Um, so, you know, I'm cool with Floyd, and, you know, I know, like I said, I know a lot of guys in there, but I've never been, like, a part of the Mayweather team. Who, who do you think would, would have been a harder fight um, when you had to deal with Canelo or, or if you had to go up against Mayweather? Say that again, say that again. If you had, like, so you fight Canelo, you've already yeah. dealt with it. Do you think it would have been a harder task to take out Mayweather? Or do you think it would have been harder for Canelo? Well, I mean, it just depends, really. You know, that's like a completely different, like, stylistic matchup. And so, you know, Canelo is quite a bit bigger and stronger. Floyd's faster, small, but he's smaller. Um, got a shorter reach. Uh, but Floyd, Floyd's not in my weight class. You know, he fought at 147. I fought at 168. So, mm. you know, too big of a weight gap. It's astonishing how much weight like dictates the fight and you said the weight doesn't matter it's your skills that matter i mean i wouldn't say the weight doesn't matter because it, it plays its part you know up until a point you know someone like david who really probably should fight at 175 and you know he's tall he's got longer arms he's naturally just like you know a heavier guy that's going to play it take his part over time mm-hmm. you know in a 12 round fight um but at the end of the day, he's got skills to go on top of that. So, you know, if he's just a big, dumb, slow guy who has no boxing skills or whereabouts about what he's doing, you know, he's not going – he's not coming out successful. But, you know, a guy who's bigger but has skills on top of that, you know, that's a dangerous guy. Yeah. If you could do any other sport, like you couldn't do boxing anymore, what would your sport be? Um, Probably football. Really? I played football when I was younger as a kid. Corner? I played a lot because I played for the same team for like from the age of seven to like high school. Um, but I played wide receiver. I played outside linebacker. I play, played a uh, wide receiver. I played some running back. On a uh, foot race, who do you think would win, me or you? <laughs> if I was running backwards, then me. You're a fast backwards <laughs> runner? See, I find yeah. that offensive because like I would be running forward. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I would love to race you one day, dude. I'm, I'm pretty quick, dude. Yeah? Yeah, I'm. I don't know what I'm doing here. (laughs) Who's your football (laughs) team? (laughs) The Titans. Oh, yeah? Yep, yep. Nice, nice. So, uh, but yeah, probably football. But I didn't really want to do football because, you know, I wasn't the biggest fan of school. I didn't see myself going to college. And where I'm from is a real small town. So we don't get a lot of big recruits, you Mm -hmm. know, to come to our school. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, So I I didn't really see that in my you know, my plans, you know, to go to college. Were, Were you, like, equally as passionate or was it, like, no, more boxing? Um, I, at the time, I was equally as passionate, but then once I got to high school, my dad told me I need to pick one because, you know, high school ball is demanding and um, boxing is obviously demanding. He's like, I don't care what you pick. You know, I'll support you either way, but, you know, you need to pick one so you can be the best at it. And yeah. I chose boxing because I didn't want to go to college and, you know, for the reasons I told you, and yeah, it worked out. I was terrible in school, too. I don't know if that makes you feel better. Yeah, yeah. That'd I didn't even better. find out I was dyslexic until, like, college time. Oh, yeah? yeah. You are dyslexic? Extremely dyslexic. Mm. Extre- are you dyslexic? No. No, of course not. <laughs> <laughs> um, What's your favorite color? I feel like the, I know it's such a stupid question, but you know when we have like podcasts, I feel like we talk about such specific things. So, what's your favorite color? Um, <laughs> you could punch her if you want. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Probably. I don't know. I go through you know phases. Oh, you change up your like, colors. Yeah, I change my colors up. Yeah. Mm. You know, I feel like that says something about you. You know what I mean? Like yeah. I'm a pink girl. You know, uh-uh. I feel who I am. I feel like you're. I want to like open you up a little. Are you like not one who opens up too much? I mean, you like. I feel, I feel like you just have open. this. You know, th- you have this like. You know, like in Disney Channel where like the bad boy comes in, you know nothing about him. He's like mysterious and stuff. <laughs> like you're giving me that vibe, and I'm like, I feel like there's something underneath that I want to talk about. But like, I feel like you're just like. I mean, bobbing and weaving. No, nah, no. Nah, I mean, whatever questions you got for me, you know, I'm gonna give you an answer on them. But as far as 
you know, opening up, I don't really know. I don't know. Did you have like a like a tight group friends, or you like opened up to be like, yeah, no, I got come like, dinner." I pr- I got like just a handful of really close friends. You know, I, I got a lot of friends, you know, all over. But as far as like my core group that I see on like a regular basis, the daily is just like a handful. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, I don't want to have too big of an entourage or, around me or stuff like that you know mm. it's good to hear that voice in your head if you got too many voices around you know you can get distracted and, oh yeah because it's better know. to have the like people that you can count on one hand yeah, yeah. than more than that because then it's just yeah exactly it's chitter chatter and yeah, you want people who know you personally too many cooks in the kitchen yeah a handful of wolves over 100 sheep you know so mm-hmm. i like that yeah i like that because there's a lot of uh, wolves that disguise themselves as sheep too so it's like it's kind of hard to like yeah, out. I mean, you just don't force it. You know, you meet somebody you don't want to just don't force it. If it's meant to be, you know, y'all be friends over time. That's how I am. Mm. Do you have any uh, like fashion people or brands that you kind of like look at for inspo? Uh, yeah, definitely. Um, I'm a big uh, Maddie Boy fan. He does a lot of the Chrome Heart stuff. He's one of those designers oh, for Chrome Hearts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, Reese, what's his name? Witherspoon. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> he's like I love Reese Witherspoon. You threw me off with that one. Uh, George Sheehan will represent. He's from the UK. Um, Reese Cooper, uh, Warren Lotus. There, there's a lot of brands that I like. You know, I don't wear too much like designer like Gucci and Versace and Fendi. Mm-hmm. I don't really like a lot of stuff yeah. like that. But I like, you know, a lot more of the. It's quality, but it's low key. You know, not everybody probably knows about it that's what i like yeah yeah. I take like a little that. inspo from here and there yeah and yeah exactly and and i don't know if this is like you but like i don't care how much money i have i won't buy a shirt if it's ridiculously expensive because of a name i just don't like that and also i know there's a lot of people that look up to me so i don't want them to feel like they need that type of stuff yeah. to feel a certain type of way well i'm not gonna lie i'll buy an expensive shirt <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah i'll definitely but you know it just depends, you know. It's got to be a piece for me. It's got to be something that I see, and I'm like, man, I gotta have that. Meaningful, yeah. you know. That's, yeah, it's not not everything's like that. But if I see something, you know, some things you got, you just gotta have. But uh, yeah, I agree with that. As soon as you said that, I was like, I don't know if the shirt's cute enough. Yeah, yeah. You know, sometimes some things are just too some cute. Some things you gotta. No, have. dude, I'm I'm, exa- I'm like, and it has nothing to do about being cheap. I think you guys can back me. I'm not a cheap individual. No, as soon as you, George's type of person, and he wakes up in the morning, he's like. I'm going to be into bikes and then goes and buys like four different bikes yeah. and then uses them every single day while he's in this, like I'm in this bike mode. Yeah, that's so. how I get too. I get obsessive. Like I'll get on one of my, I got like just a handful of hobbies. I keep rotating to through and I'll get on one and just get like completely obsessive for like a couple yeah. months. And then I'll move on to the next one. And then I like circle back around. Have, have you ever gotten into like bike riding? Nope. Bro, listen to me. <laughs> best decision I ever made. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it is literally the best decision because I, I, during COVID and like everybody, everybody and their fucking mom was talking about how they're depressed and they have uh. anxious and they blah blah blah. And like, I believe that if you keep hearing a certain type of shit, you'll become into it. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. I was like, I gotta distance myself. Maybe right now I gotta just kind of be alone and figure out my thing. And so I was like, I'm gonna fucking, I'm gonna go outside because I just been reading books and they're just yeah, saying yeah. like, just being outside brings up just so much, so much better energy. Yeah, bike riding. I don't even have meetings anymore in rooms. I bike ride. Yeah. I have the camera right here, and we're just, he's my manager right now. He can vouch every single that. time. All the time. Just on a bike. <laughs> and you know what? It gives them a good laugh. I'm not going to lie. A few companies haven't reached back. Yeah. But, <laughs> but it makes me happy. What kind of hobbies make you happy right now? Um, well, when, during the pandemic, I got support. I, I had to get a dirt bike. I went and got a dirt bike. Oh, right around Super my 73. Do you like these? Uh, say what? Do you okay? Do you know what a Super Seventy Three is? No. It's a bike that's like a, like electric, but it's oh, like a okay. crazy like it could do all types of feet. It could go into any type of conditions. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of like a dirt bike. You could yeah, take yeah. it off road. And the style of it kind of looks like a dirt bike, so you know so it looks cool. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. So dirt biking is kind of dangerous though, dude. Yeah, you're yeah. not scared of injuring yourself while you're like. Boxing? I mean, I try to be pretty careful, but you know, I grew up on four wheelers and dirt bikes and stuff like that in Tennessee. Mm-hmm. So, I you know I don't go too crazy or nothing like that. But I'm into um, cars. I got a couple Low of riders, cool cars. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I got a 64 Impala Super Sport. I got a, a 72 Chevelle. Um, I'm into clothes. I'm into boxing. That's about all I can think of. Right I now. didn't know you were into boxing. That's the <laughs> one that, that, that kind of shook me a little bit. Are you looking forward to the F1 that's happening here in November? Uh, yeah. You know, I think that's interesting. That's not like a passion of mine or nothing like the F1 oh, stuff. Okay. I'm more into like, you know, low riders and muscle cars and stuff like that. But, Collections. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. 
You ever think of getting yourself like a Mustang then? Like those old school ones? Um, old Mustang is nice. Uh, it's not on my list though. I got like a, a Grand National is on my list. Um, like a 69 Charger is on my list. 57 Chevy Bel Air is on my list. But um, I'm all out of garage right now, so I gotta, I gotta wait. <laughs> Problems. Yeah, no, for, first world problems. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Babe, we gotta get bigger garages. I don't know. Make another garage. Yeah, I love this. Um, I want to tap in to uh, to something that like how do I, I want to make sure I word this properly? Yeah, oh, fuck it. I was going to. Have you ever slapped the shit out of somebody in the street and fought like in the streets? Like, has anyone ever pissed you off? Cause like, bro, if I walked around with your skills, I'm fucking dudes up if they look at me the wrong way. Nah. And that's coming from a humble standpoint, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Real, <laughs> real humble. No, um, you know, been some unfortunate situations. Yeah, yeah, I've been in a few. In a few yeah, you, this the is ring. the first time you lit up at me and leaned in. I was, All right, let's tap into this. <laughs> yeah, Hypothetically, yeah. there was a situation. Is there anyone you would like to bring up? Nah. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, I don't know. Nah. <laughs> No. Fuck, I thought it was this close again. It's no, PRT, there's definitely no been way. a few situations where, you know, I'm a pretty quiet, laid back guy. You know, I'm not trying to, I'm just focused on what I got to do with my family. So, you know, if you approach me, you know, disrespectful or, you know, you're being disrespectful to my lady or trying to, you know, one of my friends or something, you know, that's going to be an issue. So, mm. but yeah, it's been a couple yeah. of situations. Are you like a shit talker before or are you just kind of quiet and then strike? I mean, I'm not trying to cause issues with nobody else. So I'm not loud with nobody else but you know if someone's you know every man has his line yeah. you know and if you cross that line you know sometimes there is no there's point of no return you know and yeah. everyone's line is at a different place you know we, we're all different so yeah do you feel like sometimes when you're on public because they know like you're a fighter to try and get a rise out of you oh uh, i feel like for the most part you know people have been uh, yeah they know what's up but there has yeah. been a couple people who you know i, I don't know if that strikes something in their insecurities or something where they want to try to prove themselves. But, yeah. you know, when you can really fight, you don't really feel the need to, like, prove yourself to. But, again, you know, if they, if they wind up crossing that line, you know, you got to you gotta do what you got to do. So Have you ever walked into a situation where you're like, nah, I'm not doing this one? <laughs> uh, no. Oh, well, I no. have many of those. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> where you're just jabbing at somebody and they're like, all right, let's do this. I was like, whoa, I thought we were talking here, buddy. Yeah, like, yeah. I didn't think we are going to take this <laughs> outside. No, I don't, I don't like to do too much talking like that, you know, because pe that's how people get hurt, you know. Oh, I know. And I've I know you're just fucking about, but, uh, you know, especially in the street, you know, somebody could get, get hurt, you know, and there is no respawn, you know. So just want to make sure you be safe. But, again, you know. You got you to gotta stand up for yourself at some point, so. Yeah. Yep. Sadly, none of the moments, I probably started every single one of them because I was just like a stupid kid growing <laughs> up, and I was just like with my boys, and I felt like we were invincible. Yeah, once uh, you're with your boys, you know, you start getting a little, <laughs> your chest starts poking out. I, I, I really hope my, uh, my high school, not high school, my middle school pictures, like, never leak. And I hope, and, like, thank God social media wasn't a thing then because I was in my, like, wannabe ghetto stage, bro, and it was... <laughs> Bro, I like we, me and my boys. We would fight, but we would just think that we were the baddest motherfuckers in the yeah, world. Yeah. And we were at this um this mall called Desert Ridge. Have you ever been to Arizona? No, I'll, I'll, one time, yep. Yeah. But uh, there, there's recently. an outdoor mall, and uh, dude, we were just stupid, like like literally just dumb. Yeah. And this dude is sitting at by his car, by his truck, and uh, he's just staring at my boy, and my boy's just like the fuck you looking at for no reason bro like there was literally not like, and by the way i don't even think he was even looking at our direction but he was just he you know like all of us were together and there's only one of them yeah and we was like what the fuck are you looking at and the guy goes man i'd uh i shut your mouth if i know it's good for you and then <laughs> and then me and my and we dude i'm not even joking we had like these fake chains you know in the mall where they give you some stupid yeah, yeah. chains and it's like not even real and i'll never forget this i'm like oh bro you don't <laughs> Oh, uh, bro, you don't want it. And the guy's like, nah, you guys don't want it. And yeah. so I go, all right, that's it. My boy starts walking up, and I'm, I'll never forget this. This is when I knew I'm not, this is not my life. I'm taking off my chain because apparently I don't want to ruin my fake chain. Yeah. I take off my <laughs> fake chain, and in the middle of daytime, I hear, chuk, chuk, and I'm yeah. like, what the fuck? And I look yeah. up, dude's holding a shotgun. And he when told I mean, you not to. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, he gave me the warning. We yeah, were just yeah. stupid. And yeah. when I mean, like, Clearly. we realized none of each other had each other's backs. Because, like, I didn't even remember who my friends were at that time. I jumped <laughs> on cars. I was gone. Nah. 
I wasn't looking around to save anybody. So uh, it was, I, I realized very quick, that life ain't for me. Yeah, no, some people aren't playing. You know, that's why I said you got to be careful. Mm. You know, when you're out and about, you never know who's, you know, had a bad day and you just added to it and they've had enough, you know, so mm. it's good to avoid that at all costs. I've learned. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, plus oh. you don't want to fuck your fake chain up either, so it's like... <laughs> By the way, like, I'm not even kidding. I told my parents that, and they're like, all right, we've given you enough time to pretend you're gangster, but you can't be doing that in Scottsdale. So, like, I had to change, like, all my shit. But it was cool back then, the sagging of the pants, and, like, no. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Kids, <good>. you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, maybe, uh, maybe nobody understands yeah. me. <laughs> oh, I, uh, I did um, Muay Thai for a bit, mm. and uh, Muay Thai helped me realize that you don't really know what somebody's capable with yeah. until you like run into it. Till it's too late. Till it's too late. And this is like around. I think this was like no. Nah, I think this was my last time I talked shit. Uh, I would sloppy fight in the ring, but I, it, it, I'm going up against kids that were fighting for like a month. So like I felt like this confidence. Mm. And some dude walks in, <laughs> and I've never seen him at the gym. I've been in the gym for like maybe six months now, and I'm like super confident in myself. And he's with his girlfriend, and this guy's so meek. And so quiet. And I'm like, yo, who's that? I feel so stupid saying this. Yeah. I'm different You look now. stupid saying this. <laughs> 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 go on, go on. Yeah, go on well, go okay. So, I, <laughs> so, and by the way, I was like 15, 16. I oh, wasn't okay. like in my 20s. Oh, okay. I very much learned my lesson. Yeah. And so, uh, so I'm like, yo, who's next? And uh, I look at him and I was like, no, not you, bro. Uh, don't get embarrassed in front of your girlfriend. Mm. And uh, he smiled at me. That should have been my first indicator. That's a red flag. Yeah, that's a huge red flag. He yeah. just smiled at me. Didn't say a fucking word. Mm. And I was like, all right, let's go. We get in the ring, bro. I swear to God, all I remember is the whistle blowing. Like, like we yeah. didn't have no bell, no nothing. And I did one of these things because my friend wasn't a fighter, but he was like this like gangster. And he would just do this funny thing where he'd go like that. Mm. And then the people would like kind of let up and then he'd hit him. Mm. And he was watching me. So I wanted to throw in one of those mm. to like impress him. Yeah, 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 and all I, all I remember is, and I just wake <laughs> up and they're like digging the uh, mouth guard out of my mouth. And I'm like, what the fuck happened? And they're like, yeah, he kicked the fucking shit out of you. And I was like, one kick? He's like, oh, yeah. And it was loud. But everybody stopped practicing. And as yeah. I'm walking out with an ice bag on my face, I look up at the gym, and this dude is in every picture holding <laughs> a, a belt. And I was like, why did anybody tell me that? And he's like, yeah, he was in Taiwan training for like six months, and now he's back. And I was like, all right. now I." <laughs> and by the way, this kid was like really skinny. It wasn't like we, I thought I was going to body this dude. Yeah. I'm, not, I'm not the fighter. You got the experience, though, right after you needed it. Oh, the experience was you're not a fighter. Walk away. Not that day. You needed, to be, you needed to be humbled, and that's what that's what you needed. I feel like I started the podcast, and you're like, I want to be here, and then now I said that, and you're like, I should just walk up and leave. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna put this closer to you. Yeah, you're good. So you're from, you said Tennessee. Right? Yeah, yeah, Tennessee. like 25 minutes, 30 minutes right outside of Nashville. Okay. Yeah, you yeah, fuck so. with Justin Timberlake. I mean, he's a great artist, you know, he, he's done a lot of great things. I don't like listen to his music or even growing up, you know, I wouldn't like listen to his music on a daily basis, but you know, he's a talented guy. He's had a lot of success. Wow. I like him. Why wouldn't you listen to Justin Timberlake? <laughs> like he's I mean, the best. <laughs> yeah, no, nah, he's, he's the real deal. He's had a great career. And I, I think, didn't he sell his catalog of music off for like? No, that's Justin oh. Bieber. Oh, okay, okay. But Justin yeah. Bieber is also very Justin talented. Yeah. Do that too. yeah. But, um. Did you ever grow up like riding horses or? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Um, my grandpa, uh, he was like a mile down the street. He had a uh, walking horse farm. And really? um, he, uh, my big sister, she won a world championship on a walking horse. No way. Yep. Yep. Yeah. So. What did she do? Did she race them or do tricks? Uh, a walking horse. It, it does like these high steps and stuff oh, like, like that. Oh, like in England when, you know, like, you know, and they do the proper yeah, walk. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of. It's kind of like that. But um, it's called Tennessee Walking Horses. But she won a world championship with that. So, you know, just growing up on the farm, around four wheelers, going fishing, you know, running around, getting hurt and falling yeah. down and stuff like that. You know, it was a good time. Good time mm -hmm. as a kid. And. You know, we didn't have a whole lot, but when you know, when you're outside, it's like 200 acre farm. Yeah. So you know, being able to move around like that, it was it was definitely necessary. Do you ever want to go back to Tennessee? Uh, yeah, I go back a couple of times a year to see my family, my grandpa. You know, me and my grandpa are real close, and uh, to see my sisters and my family. Oh, so they all so, stay there? Yeah, they're there. Yeah, my dad moved out here, but it's, it's a lot different. You live here now. Yeah. Do you like it, or is it kind of too much? No, I like it. I like it. I like it because um, you know, everything's like 15, 20 minutes away, and uh. 
you know, 15, 20 minutes away. It's just a quiet, regular neighborhood. But if you want to go to a dinner or a show or a fight or, mm -hmm. you know, anything, you know, it's, it's all right here in the city. And so for the time being, you know, for, throughout my boxing career and stuff, I definitely see myself staying here. I, I really like Vegas. Right. I like to go hiking and camping and stuff like that, too. So. Oh, that's good. It's uh, nice that your dad's out here with you. Yeah, yeah. He wasn't here for the first couple of years, but he moved out about a year or two ago. And uh, just for us to continue to work, you know, more on, on my boxing. He's been my coach since I started. And uh, so, you know, it's important as, for us to, you know, see this thing out together. And mm. yeah. I love that. Yeah. So is he coaching? Like, do you have a couple coaches? He coaches with some of your other coaches? Yeah, I have a head coach. Uh, his name is um, Stephen Edwards. Everyone calls him Breadman, and he's one of the top coaches in boxing. Um, he, he was my head, started to be my head coach as of like two fights ago, because me and my head coach at the time, we split. And, um, you know, he's been a great addition, uh, but I have a head coach, an assistant coach, uh, strength and conditioning coach, uh, you know, I have manager, advisor, sports massage therapist, nutritionist, you know, I got a big team. Yeah, I got a lot of people team. around me, yeah. yeah. If you don't mind me asking, um, what happened with your other coach, the reason why you split? Um. I won't get into too many details, but just after the Canelo fight, um, you know, it was really his decision, you know, just to go separate ways. And uh, but it was for the best, you know, it's something that I needed. And we have been together for so long. Sometimes you need something new in your life to, right. you know, you, you know, not keep doing the same old stuff. So yeah. it, it was a great um, it's been great for my career. And I'm super happy with with it, with who I'm with now and what we're doing and um, a lot, lot more big fights on the way. Yeah. Do you ever have problems saying goodbye to certain type of people? Like, for example, if you know somebody's, like, not good for you, but there's love and there's, like, history there, so you're like, I don't even know how to go about this. Like, how do you... Yeah, yeah, it, it can be difficult to navigate through that sometimes. That's not one of my, like, strongest suits, Same. you know, being able to do that. But, uh, you know, sometimes certain situations cause for you to have to be, you know, that person. And, and But a lot of times, the sooner you make the decision to get them people out of your life, you know, it's almost like a weight lifted off your shoulders. And, Tremendously. You know, you can move forward with, you know being able to move better. And yeah. so I, I think it's definitely important. You know, you got to be able to cut ties. And if you continue into, you know, better yourself inside of your boxing or outside in life and, you know, the people around you aren't, you know, there's only one way to close that gap and it's to them either move up or you move down. And, you know, you can't move down. So, you know, eventually y'all grow apart. But uh, it, it's unnecessary to be able to make those decisions. It's hard. Yeah. yeah, it can be. I just feel like I'm giving up. And then, like, my biggest fear is giving up on something that's beautiful. So, like, sometimes I get really in my head because I'm so focused more on fixing who I am yeah. that I always think that I'm the issue of the, the situation. Because I yeah. feel like, okay, we're at the table. The table's not working out right now. And a lot of people like to put the blame on other people. Yeah. Um, but I was, I was raised to reflect. If it's, yeah. it, it, I got I to gotta fix this before I even go anywhere near the other person. Yeah. Um, and sometimes it's really hard when you want to reflect and build and uh, the people you love destroy. And it's just like, yeah. all right, how do I show by example like we should, you know. But if you are, you know, doing doing your best and nobody's perfect, you know, but if that person that's able with you isn't able to reflect as well, you know, that's a one-way street. And if you're doing the best you can and you know for a fact that they're not, you know, keeping up when they can be, you know, you may let that slide for a while, but eventually, you know, you're going to have to cut those ties because – you know, that situation is only going to, you know, become more chaotic, become more frustrating. And so you definitely got to, you know, it's always good to self-reflect and be honest with yourself because, you know, if you can't be honest with yourself, you know, who can you be real with? But if they're not willing to do the same, you know, eventually that's going to run out. Yeah. And yeah. it's exhausting, you know, being in a relationship with somebody like your friends. That, yeah. And you're always the one bringing to your friends and they're not bringing it back to you. Yeah. It's not. That's you, not going to last. You also get like, um, you start kind of to hate the person. Mm -hmm. Some resentment, you know, yeah. resentment can grow. But, um, you know, you, you may still love them, but sometimes you just got to love people from a distance and, you know, let them do their own thing and just stay focused on, on, on the road ahead. And, you know, if they can't keep up, you know, eventually they're just going to fade away anyway. So it's unfortunate, but that's life. You know, not everybody's going to make it. Mm -hmm. And you know, you can't force somebody to want it, so. Yeah, no, it's a good, it's good that you have that mindset. It's important, and I feel like you don't, I feel like maybe you're not somebody who holds grudges, and you kind of, like, forgive and move forward. I mean, as I've gotten older, yeah, you know, yeah. as a kid, never forgave anything, never let go of anything, oh, yeah. never let nothing go, you know, and just 
all these emotions. And that's one of the reasons I got here is just having that fuel to the fire. But, you know, as you get older, you understand that, you know, you got to you got to let go of certain things, make room for a little bit more. So, yeah, exactly. Letting go could heal. Yeah. And you're really letting go for you. You know, you're forgiven for you, not for them. Mm. You know, so that way you don't got to carry that shit. Yeah. You know, you're really forgiven so that you ain't got to be worried about it. Does that ever weigh on you? Like if you like make a decision and like, you know, it's the best decision, but you know how they're looking at you and they feel about you. And you're like, fuck, dude, like I'm not the bad guy. Yeah. I hate being the bad guy when I've done my, my all my best to be the best guy. Over, you know, at first situations, you know, you started getting the public eye and these stories started coming about that aren't even true. And, you know, at first you want to make everyone believe your side of the story because it's what's real. But, you know, you can't make everybody, you know, believe that. And after a while, you just get fed up with trying to you know, correct everyone on how they view you or how they look at you just because they heard a story that's not true about you. And, you know, you can't you can't control, you know, what everyone else. And it's really not even your business what other people think about you. You know, why would it be your Damn, business? Damn, you that's know? fucking deep, yeah. bro. Yeah, it's really not even your business what somebody thinks about you. It's your business what you think about you. You know, that's what's most important. So you can't get caught up in none of that. Damn. Yeah, that's true. You know what? That's fucking... That, yeah. That's, like, I mean, that's why, that one stuck with me. Yeah, like, why yeah. are we caught up with, like... Yeah, if somebody's private thoughts about you, it's like, yeah, maybe they're not thinking the right things. Maybe they're thinking malicious thoughts about you, but... Why is that like, your business? Yeah. You know? <laughs> Who yeah. gives a fuck? Yeah. <laughs> it's their opinion. I mean, and it sucks, but you can't, you know, you can't force everybody. And so I, I let go of that a long time ago, just trying to, you know, write certain stories and tell my side and expect everyone to, you know, you can't go through life doing that. You just got to I'm I'm, going. I'm yeah. going through what you're talking about and... I, the best decision I made was like getting rid of my phone. So like I look at my phones with my sister all the time because when I read comments yeah. about me, that's so far from who I am. Huh. It, it keeps me up at night. Like I just go, man, like there's people that truly believe this narrative of me yeah. and my whole life. I've always taken the harder road to make sure that I, I go to sleep with integrity. So like when you go to bed and you are seeing people reflect on you in a, in a light that you would never want to be caught in, it um, it really uh, affects my day to day because it's just staying in my head. It just yep. doesn't go away. And you know, for most of us, you know, you see something that may bother you for a day, and then it bothers you a little less the next day, and then a little, and then you know, by the third or fourth day, it's like you don't care no more. But just don't get too caught up in you know what other people are saying about you. As long as you know, you know, you know, you can't get caught up in all those other voices. Like I said earlier, you know, having too many people around and. Too many voices get in your head. You know, your voice has to be the loudest. And even social media, you know, you read stuff. These voices may get in your head. But as long as your voice, you know, is the loudest, you know, that's really all that matters. It may bother you for a day or two. But, you know, you got you to gotta keep going on. And also, too, you know, if you get so busy with your own goals and things you're trying to create, things you're trying to bring to life, you know, you only have so many days you could be bothered about that because you're so focused on, you know, your goals that are in the forefront of your mind. You know, if your goals are in the back of your head and, everyone's voices in the front, you know, that's going to take center stage. But if you're busy enough and always working on something new, you know, those goals are going to stay in the forefront. So. Did it take Facts. practice or is it like natural to you? I mean, it just comes with experience, you know, it just comes over time. You get so, it happens so often, you know, it's like riding a roller coaster a hundred times in a row. The first time is going to mean something, you know, mm. by the 10th time, it's not, yeah. it's not all that much no more. So you know, eventually over just time, experience. you just, yeah, just yeah. experience, you know. And you know what, too? I almost feel like because we're so, we're in this generation of we post everything that we do, what, who we're talking to, what we're eating. We just like, we want to know everything about each other. We put everything out there. And, and it's almost like now we do that to personal relationships. It's like, we need to know what everybody's thinking. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. it's almost like that what we've been conditioned now. It's like, no, I need to know like your opinion about me and what you think about this. And I need to know this. And yeah. when it's, like, no, like, we're, yeah, we're not meant to know all these things. And also that goes back to, like, only consuming. Mm -hmm. You know, you're consuming what everybody else is doing. You know, you're, you're posting, you're, may, maybe your intentions are wrong even while you post it. You post it and everyone's, but you can't get, um, what, what was I saying? What was I saying? I lost my, my train of thought, my bad. What was we talking about? <laughs> Dude, I'm, I'm right there with you today. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, it's just that we overly post about everything oh, that we're yeah, doing. Oh, yeah, having so to know. Yeah, you don't want to, you know. Again, you want to have things, a structure set up in your day where, you know, you wake up and you get to something and then, you know, you may take a break and then you get to something else. And, you know, as long as you're staying focused on your goals and your dreams throughout the day, you're so busy, caught up trying to create that. You're not consuming what everybody else is doing. And so that 
that's big for me, you know, just not consuming, whether it's social media or only buying things or, you know, only looking at what everybody else is doing. You got to create, too, whether it be, you know, things for others to consume through clothing, through social media, you know, don't just be a consumer. Yeah, it's what you're focusing on. I keep realizing this, like, all the shit that I think in my head is I'm, I get overwhelmed with, like, another person doesn't even know it exists. And it's just because I'm staying focused on it. And it's like yeah. there's, a, there's a saying when you're skiing, don't focus on the trees because yeah. you'll smack into the trees. Uh-huh. So what I'm picking up from you is like when you were going through this, you, you just kind of made a decision. Like, I'm not going to focus on that. I'm going to focus on my goals. Yeah. And I just wanted to pick your brain because it's like easier said than done. But yeah. I think like a month into it, I'm like, fuck, bro. It should already be easier now. I should already be adjusted to this. And um, Well, you're focusing on how quickly you should get to that mind state as opposed to just – working on accomplishing one task at a time for whatever sets you further ahead, you know, you're focusing on focusing on the wrong thing. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, it's kind of like that old person who who's too worried about what everyone else is doing. And if they jaywalked or if they went two miles over the speed limit, the Karens, exactly. You know, it's because <laughs> they don't have enough time on their hands. You know, they're too, they got too much free time. So they're worried about what everyone else is doing and saying and, mm-hmm. You being a Karen, man? What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> nah. I'm only being a Karen because I'm caring. No, nah, no. Nah. <laughs> but yeah, you know, you just got to continue to set new goals and reach new heights and set the goals big enough to where it's, you know, constantly, you know, taking up your day to the point where it's like, man, I'm not worried about what everyone else is saying. What are they doing? Mm. You know? I love that, man. Yeah. yeah, I really do. I appreciate your mind. I really do. I like to find people that I look up to when it comes to a certain type of thing. And then when I was doing my homework on it, I was just like, man, this guy does not give a fuck at all. Like, you just don't care. Well, I care about what I'm doing. Yeah, but I'm talking about the bullshit that usual people care about. Like, Yeah, but you just said it, you know, it's just bullshit. Yeah. You just said it, you know, it's bullshit. And I'm not going to act like nothing anyone ever says ever, you know, make, make me make a face like, what the fuck is he talking about? Or, you know, that ain't true or what. But it doesn't mean that that's like, you know, my end of motion after I'm done thought about it it's like hey you know you can't control him we gotta get back to work on whatever we're doing yeah do you ever do you ever like do you think it helps you get personal when you're angry with your like your opponent does it affect the way you fight or no yeah you don't wanna be angry you know that's how you get tired that's how you get tense you know if you sit here and flex your arm as hard as you can and then I just sit here and hold it up you know you're gonna get tired before me so you wanna be relaxed and calm and that way you can think things through and yeah clear uh, mind clear mind yeah, yeah, yeah you know what i wish i was just uh reading a script and then like she said something so like it's so fair she was trying to get a rise of somebody and she's like that's the best thing you can do is like ma- get them emotional you know what i mean mm-hmm. like get them angry and get them yeah. emotional because then they won't you won't have a good fight yeah you know? exactly exactly so you want to stay calm you want to stay cool you don't want to you don't want to get mad that's not gonna work out for you yeah I love that. But just again, it's just like, I, like for example, like me and my sister, like working with a, a family member, right? And yeah. uh, I always tell myself, I'm like, yo, like I got to be careful how I speak to her because I'm comfortable with her. Yeah. And so like in my head when something comes up and I'm so comfortable letting off, like, yo, bro, like fucking just get that. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I would never say, yo, get, the fu- get to, yeah, like yeah, that yeah, to yeah. read because he's, an, he's my friend, but also he's a like, professional employee. So like yeah. it's just these thoughts I got I to gotta practice with and um, – and that, you know, I'm sure we're all guilty of that, but it's just, you know, slow to speak, you know, you just because that's the emotion that you're, or, you know, the words that pop in your head, that may not be how you want to convey it. So, you know, you, that's the emotion, but you got to get your vocabulary, you got to take a second and get your vocabulary together, make sure you try to convey it, you know, the best way you can, which, you know, I'm guilty. I'm sure we all are, you know, something just pops in our head and we just blurt right, it out, yeah. especially with the people we're most comfortable with. But yeah. Yeah. that's one thing. You know, communication is key. That's one thing I'm learning as I get older. It's, it's it mostly has to do with you know your vocabulary. You know, with, mm-hmm. with how you say it to the convey it to the you know person you're talking to. We all feel the same shit, but you know you got to get your you got to think, stop, think for a second, get your vocabulary right. That's way that way you know you get your message across how you want. Yeah, and you know what? You started saying one of sorry, started saying one of my um, my favorite Bible verses, which is slow to speak, slow to anger, and quick to listen. Yeah. I yeah, I'm working on all three of those. So. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure we all are. So. Yeah. I started um, journaling my thoughts because I realized that um, I, I like to self-reflect and sometimes it's like a double-edged sword and I could do too much of it. So yeah. I could go down this spiral and I realized when I write my thoughts, 
because I have so many that when you have to put on a piece of paper that you're like, all right, I'm only going to do the one that I feel the most. Yeah. And I started writing and when I go, I don't read it right away. Yeah. I'll let it sit yeah. and then I'll go back to it. And it's, I know it sounds stupid, but like, have you ever like vented to a friend and then they give you advice? Yeah. And I realized that a lot of people are better at giving advice than just like doing the advice. It's like, it's easier um, said, than done. said than done. And yeah. so I started giving myself advice by giving myself two days in between my journals. So like, I'll read back and I'm like, all right, this is why I felt this way. Like, yeah. I got to get better at this. Well, do you think that, you know, you self-reflect too much in a way that like keeps you from accomplishing things you want to do because you're sitting around thinking it too yeah, much? Yeah, of course. Well, that's probably just subconsciously like your way of sabotaging, not getting well. going. Yeah. You know, it's like in a, it's like a fear. I don't mean it, yeah, in a bad way, but it's like an excuse in your head yeah, that you right. use to not really get going. You know, you're you, absolutely right. I'm it doesn't matter if you yeah. do it wrong or mess up or, you know, everybody sucks starting out at something. So you just got to jump in, jump in, just start doing it, trial and error, get it better and better. And it's the fear of loving it so much that you don't want to ruin it. Like, for example, for me, for stand-up, there's times where I just don't go on stage because there's a joke that I love, and I'm like, oh, what if I'm not ready to say this one without yeah. it properly executed? And then I'm like, okay, look, on to the next thing. And I well, like, you don't want to ruin it, but it's like people don't do stuff because they don't want to fail, but really it's like you're failing to do it. You know, that's the only way you fail is if you don't do it. Man, you have bars, yeah, dude. All these, like, I'm like, I'm gonna, you're <laughs> like a clipping like, meme. I'm going to take all that, of that. That's what's real, though, you know? Yeah. Like, you're just failing not to do it. If you do it, who cares, you know? Yeah, you gotta, you gotta do it. It don't matter if it's what you like. Then who cares if you're good at it? And if you like it enough, you're gonna keep practicing until you get good at it. Mm. But the only way you're gonna get good is what? Keep going. Uh, yeah. You're well, not yeah. gonna be Dave Chappelle on night one, you know? <laughs> night three. Yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> uh, Who's your favorite stand-up? Uh, Dave Chappelle. Has to be. He's one of the goats. Yeah, that's my guy. And I, I feel like it, it makes sense that he is your guy because he's so fucking true to himself. Like, so true to himself. That guy does not give a fuck at all. He got turned on $50 million just because he's like, nah, I don't want to deal with you guys anymore. And I'm like, oh, my God. Yeah, that was, I mean, he's got principles, you know, and they mm -hmm. crossed that line, so he didn't want to play with them. But, yeah, I got a lot of respect for Dave. And But, yeah, sometimes people, you know, they sit around, they think so much, they never even get going. But, really, that's that's why they're sitting around thinking because they're too scared to get going. And that's what they tell people. Well, I've just been self-reflecting. But, really, you just got to. Has there ever been a situation that you've done that to yourself? Yeah, yeah. Cool. Yeah, certain things, but with the things that I really like and can see myself doing, like, I'm going to push forward with that, you know? And if it's, at first it's going to suck. Like, at first I was selling, like, $20 t-shirts out of my apartment back home in Tennessee, you know? And the prints were ugly, the shirts were ugly, the the wash was okay. And, you know, now, before this last fight, you know, I sold 702 units of clothing, whether it be you know, almost 300 tees and 100 hats and shorts and hoodies. And, you know, I sold, you know, it's about like 50K worth of clothing. Did you ever feel like you'd ever get there? Does it ever feel like fake to you? Uh, I mean, it don't feel fake because I put in a lot of work, you know, on building my name up in boxing and, you know, working hard on it outside of trying to connect the dots. But um, so I don't I never tell myself like, oh, I can never do that. Hmm. I mean, if someone else has done it, you know, that's my only, that's all I need to know it can be done. Yeah. You know, now whether I really want to do it or not, you know, that's different. But um, I never try to put a ceiling on what I could do one day. But you don't think about that when you first start. You know, you you just set goals along the way. And then all of a sudden you look up and you've, you know, all of a sudden you're selling, you know, 702 units. That's That's not bad. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. I see you have quite a few tattoos. Like, are you somebody who... Do, do all your tattoos have meanings or you just go after looks? Like, what's your favorite one that you have? Uh, I mean, they're not all, like, super sentimental to me, but I like all of them and got all of them for a reason. Um, but I probably won't get too many more. I don't want to – I feel like nowadays everyone has, like, a sleeves and it's just, like, yeah. I don't want to just have all the same. You, you know, it's just sleeve, like, yeah. yeah, it's, like, all the same thing everyone else is doing, so. Yeah, yeah. But I love that. Yeah. Dude, thank you so much for coming by and, like, letting me pick your brain and – See your point of view on life. It's uh, it's very inspirational, and I really appreciate your time. For sure, definitely, man. I appreciate you having me. And, Thank you, bro. You know, such a pleasure talking. Appreciate the time. Appreciate you. Um, is there anything that you want people to know before we sign off? Like, is there any like clothing dropping? Is there anything like you want them to focus on? Uh, yeah, just be on, you know, be on the lookout for another revenge store drop. You know, I'm cooking up things now, as we speak, and uh, just stay stay tuned. Another fight by the end of the year, and um, I'm in the gym training, so. I'm excited for what's next. I love that, man. Let's Thank go. you so much. Yeah. <laughs>